Touch on confirmed. Perseverance, safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Yesterday, on February 18th, 2021, we witnessed history, or at least a simulation of history and live reactions to it. NASA managed to land their new rover Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. And the vehicle, lovingly nicknamed Percy, has already sent back images from its landing site. More on that later, let's go through this step by step. If you remember, NASA launched Perseverance on top of an Atlas rocket provided by United Launch Alliance back on July 30th, 2020. As is tradition for an occasion like that, I recreated the entire Mission in Kerbal Space program back then. You can go and watch that video afterwards, since it goes into a lot of detail about Perseverance's long-term mission goals and the implications those have on space exploration for years to come. Yesterday, Perseverance was finally arriving at Mars and we were able to witness the seven minutes of terror of entry, descent and landing, or EDL in short, monitored from a control room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL. The spacecraft screened towards the red planet at over 10,000 miles an hour, almost 17,000 kilometers per hour, before separating the protective shell from the crew stage, which had provided maneuvering control and power during the trip through interplanetary space. You can relive all of this by visiting NASA's EYES website, where they have an interactive simulation of Perseverance landing on Mars. Fortunately, the heat shield worked as intended and kept the vehicle safe during descent while small thrusters corrected its heading during this time. The Martian atmosphere managed to slow the vehicle down to just 950 miles an hour, around 1500 km per hour, before the parachute deployed and cut this speed in half before the heat shield separated. Then a fascinating part of the mission began. TRN Image Acquisition. TRN stands for Terrain Relative Navigation. This scans the surface and compares it to pictures of already available maps to pinpoint the optimal landing site. The descent stage did this all on its own. Since Mars is very far away, light needs to travel between 3 and 22 minutes from Earth to reach it, depending on its orbital position. Yesterday, the signal delay was 11 minutes, which of course made it impossible to directly control the vehicle. It had to be able to land autonomously. And since the target site, Jezero Crater, is riddled with hazards, Perseverance had to scan for the right spot to fly to before dropping from the protective shell, which happened one minute before landing. At this point, the vehicle had already slowed down to 180 miles per hour, around 290 km per hour. The final minute of the landing process saw the descent stage steer Perseverance towards the precise landing location and slow the vehicle down to almost a hover 20 meters above ground. It was now time for the rover to be separated from the descent stage, the famous sky crane apparatus coming into play here, that was already used successfully with the Curiosity rover. Once the payload was on the ground, the cables were released and the descent stage flew away from Perseverance and crashed a safe distance away. As soon as all of this confirmed, the control room burst into celebration. Instead of the usual high fives, socially distanced fist bumps were given, or the occasional friendly hug, probably ignoring COVID mitigation measures, but who can blame them, really? NASA made history here, sending the heaviest payload to this day to Mars, and will continue to make history by extracting soil samples and later picking them up and returning them to Earth. Also, Perseverance will deploy the Ingenuity Copter, a small drone that will be flight tested in Mars's atmosphere. As I mentioned in the beginning, I already talked about all of these things in detail in my previous video, so please go and watch that, it's really informative. Another round of cheers erupted when Percy sent back the first images from the ground. These were taken by the so-called HAZCAMs which are located in front and back of the rover and are designed to survey the terrain in front of the wheels so that the rover can avoid obstacles, hazards, therefore the name has cam, and prevent damage. I'm not gonna lie, I had a huge smile on my face when successful touchdown was confirmed and the control room started celebrating. 
This was an amazing achievement for everybody involved, especially when taking into account that NASA had to modify a lot of their procedures to provide a safe working environment during a global pandemic last year and still managed to get the mission launched within the planned window. Now we have to wait what's next for Percy and its many sensors, cameras and experiments. I can't wait. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.